Did you hear I was proving that the moon landing was faked? No, was it really? Yeah, I saw it on Instagram. Everyone's reposting it. Oh my gosh, seems legit, but are you sure? Duh, I'm an activist. Okay, what else? Fake news. Now, defined as false or misleading information that is fabricated, distributed, and portrayed as real, factual news. With the rise of technology, more and more information is being twisted and spread at a higher magnitude to fit different narratives, making it harder to trust what we watch and read. As our generation gets ready to vote in the next election, we grow into new responsibilities, as it is our civic duty to participate in and promote our nation's democracy. In the digital age, it is becoming all the more scary to be a voter. There is a common apprehension towards the media and never knowing who to trust. Accurate and trustworthy news is of utmost necessity to being an informed citizen, and the rise of fake news is threatening our ability to carry out our civic duties. This is why fake news is an enemy to all of us, and as young people begin to age into more prominent roles in our society, it is now becoming our job to come up with ways to combat the spread of misinformation. The vast amount of information that is being pushed out by the second who makes it nearly impossible to authenticate. For instance, the latest data shows that Google processes over 99,000 searches every single second. This makes more than 8.5 billion searches a day. Information that widespread allows for a gargantuan proportion of misinformation and a rampant spread of propaganda. Fake news and misinformation is a threat to our democracy, our civil rights, and the knowledge of the public. In order to combat these undesirable effects, we must employ methods such as increased fact checking, public education and media literacy, and regulating what organizations social media platforms partner with. As we know, technology has caused massive upheavals in many areas of life. Traditionally, news sources primarily came in the form of newspapers and other physical means. For example, the government of any other group's propaganda had to be spread through word of mouth, posters, newspapers, etc. According to an article titled Social Media Propaganda, propaganda was likely used in some form since the dawn of human civilization. Although the oldest known example is uh, thought to be a clay cylinder created by Persian King Cyrus the Great uh, in the 6th century BC. You've probably had to peruse old propaganda posters from eras such as that of World War I in your history class and marvel at how obvious the attempts at public persuasion were. Now with the rise of the internet, televised news, and social media, the potential to spread false ideas at a rapid pace has grown immensely, and these attempts are not, as, not quite as obvious. From the same article, several studies conducted in the late 2010s and early 2020s have noted in the increasing use of social media propaganda by governments around the globe. It's also important to consider the role of journalists themselves in the history of fake news and misinformation. In writing your articles, have you ever purposely bent the truth or provided only evidence that confirmed your own bias? Um, I wouldn't say that I've done that for an article. I would say that maybe in a school assignment that I needed to like prove a point and I thought that if I didn't, then my grade would be bad. So there were situations where I would do that, but I didn't. You might have heard of the muckrakers of the pre-World War I era, who were driven by their desire for reform and exposing great detail the flaws of our society, with their shocking claims gaining them the notoriety and the trust of the public. A popular example of this is Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, in which he exposed the unsanitary horrors of the meatpacking industry. While Sinclair's piece was not fake news, this form of journalism still greatly impacted the role of the media and transformed it from a fabricated dramatization of events to a catalyst for free speech and expression. On the flip side, one historical example of fake news is yellow journalism, which was also rampant throughout our nation's history. Yellow journalism was characterized by exaggerations of truth and sensationalism with the goal of influencing the audience to believe and act accordingly. We see these themes carry on today within the field of journalism, and it begs the question of journalists' obligation to ethical and truthful reporting. How much of the responsibility of public knowledge falls into their hands? Are they the problem, or is a larger entity at play? 2016, the year that fake news became a term of the modern era. 
as he happened to have one of the most divisive presidential elections in American history. We saw Trump and Clinton go head to head in a particularly stark red versus blue political climate in which the candidates used every mode of information spread in order to advance their points of view. Gaelic Context writes, during the 2016 U.S. presidential election cycle, big news went viral, with both the public and politicians criticizing the surge of dangerous false rumors and quote-unquote hoax news, and debating how much of an influence the phenomenon had on the election results. During this time, we saw media manipulated by politicians, Twitter playing a role on the election like never before, and from the mouth of Donald Trump himself, we heard the words fake news yelled in protest at unfavorable depictions of his campaign John, no, no. John Roberts, go ahead. CNN's fake news. I don't well, take sir, questions. I don't take... The term took hold in our modern society in a way no one could have anticipated and became our label for the spread of misinformation that has plugged our nation since the beginning. Sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all too common on, on social, social media. media. Social media platforms are infamous for behaving as a stimulus for fake news to spread. Platforms like Facebook and Instagram are known to suffer from the repost without research phenomenon where users see false headlines that evoke some sort of passion, passion or fervent opposition and repost them to draw more attention to them. They tend to do this without taking a quick second to Google and confirm that what they've read is real news and the cycle repeats itself with each user. Read, don't research, repost, repeat. The two age groups most susceptible to this behavior are teenagers and the elderly. Teens can attest to the performative activist culture that floods their Instagram feeds with brightly colored infographics urging users to repost their potentially unreliable contents. The elderly having a lack of experience with technology are often more inclined to believe fake headlines they read on adult geared sites such as Facebook and even get scammed. Since this is since this source of news looks so similar to their more reliable televised news and newspapers. The spread of misinformation is harmful to those in volatile situations, particularly when na natural disasters target disadvantaged communities. NPR has discovered sobering truths about the impact of Hurricane Ian going beyond the physical damage through correspondence with the Floridian governor, Ron DeSantis, and local correspondent, Leslie Come Torres. One of the dangers pointed out was how easily old clips are recycled and shared without the knowledge that the clip is a few years old. One of these is a video that surfaced in 2016 of a shark swimming through flooded residential areas that gained popularity through the news coverage on Hurricane Ian. This video gained traction on several different sites and amassed 13 million views. While some may view this as a silly prank, the falsehood can cause panic in many communities, especially those who don't have time to verify the source. These fabrications distract people from reliable news sources and in extreme cases have been the difference between life and death. These fake news sources can disproportionately affect minorities, especially those who are not fluent in English, as there are fewer sources for them to verify the information, and the custom for information to spread through private sources such as WhatsApp. With larger companies such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc., it is easier for those corporations to eventually take down and flag information. Private messages, however, are nearly impossible to trace and verify. Many times, it is friends and family unknowingly sharing false information, which creates a ripple effect and allows messages to reach many people. As this problem progresses, the consequences become more dangerous to the public. According to the article by David Tolkas, most, most Americans concerned with fake news, but fake news may be old news, misinformation is spreading among the U.S. Over 91% of Americans believe that its spread is a problem. Seven out of ten Americans also believe that misinformation increases extreme political views, contributing to escalating crimes and attacks. Distrust in the government and media outlets often leads to public outrage and increasing amounts of hate. The consequences of this stretch beyond the scope of urban areas and into rural communities that don't have resources to alleviate this issue. Without solutions to this issue, society will rapidly descend into dystopia. So, what can we do? There isn't a surefire way to stop information at its source, although there are numerous ways to educate communities and inform citizens about the truth so that they are less susceptible to believing fake news, as well as mitigate the massive influx of misinformation. 
There needs to be a precise middle ground of censorship in order to find a valid solution to this problem. These efforts have already begun to try and decrease this problem. According to fake news and social media, written by Gale in Context, new tools have been devised for flagging accounts guilty of generating false news. Educating people on how to identify and avoid fake news is another important effort. Many social media sites we see today have already implemented the use of different fact-checking programs. These, these programs warn viewers of potential misinformation. Viewers should take these seriously and implement these programs into other sites. In addition to the use of fact-checking programs, social media sites themselves can do a better job double-checking what they allow to go viral. Most social media sites use, al use algorithms that promote what is pop most popular, disregarding the validity of the information. Social media can be manipulated by sponsorships made with the platform, which are mainly driven by monetary motivations. Instead, companies should strive for partnerships with not only reliable organizations and businesses, but also with educational institutions that don't misinform and support news literacy. Brookings.edu says it, says it best. There should be money to support partnerships between journalists, businesses, educational institutions, and nonprofit organizations to encourage news literacy. With rising tensions and greater impact that comes with the spread of misinformation, different solutions are being created daily. The easy solution would be to censor all opinions that are posted or stated online, take down everything that seems to be fake or doesn't adhere to a certain political party's ideals. But then we are stuck in an echo chamber of the same opinions, and who decides what is censored and how do we ensure that they do not have their own biases? Censorship quickly becomes political and creates new divisions among the people. A monumental piece of literature that characterized the stark conditions posed by misinformation and fascism is 1984 by George Orwell. Additionally, this gave rise to the term Orwellian, which is used to describe characteristics of a totalitarian government, or used to describe a political system in which the government tries to control every part of people's lives. A major function of the government, particularly the Ministry of Truth, is to alter the media to fit the narrative of the government. One day they're at war with Southeast Asia and Oceania the next, adapting every textbook, newspaper, film, and novel to support their agenda. The metaphoric Big Brother has become literal over there, and we only have false media and misinformation to blame for it. Although this makes the future feel hopeless, and that is not the truth. The power is in the hands of the people, and it's our job to ensure the safety of our nation and preserve democracy under the principles of truth. The main character, Winston, rebels by the use of free thought, completely stopping information from being shared would be harmful to freedom of speech and the rights that our country is all about. But allowing any and everything to be shared with the public is also dangerous, as society can be in contact with disturbing or false information. One way we can fight against propaganda and the spread of misinformation is by getting our news from a variety of sources, both biased and objective. As we age into more civic responsibilities in this age of digital news, we are now tasked with another duty: to fact check, to be skeptical, and to combat falsehoods we see being spread. Our generation has the power to give the press back to the people and to allow us to make informed decisions when it matters most. 